Four ways to know if you have an upper limit problem. Number one, you're not allowing happiness in your life. Number two, you get sick a lot. Number three, your to-do list paralyzes you often. And number four, you question absolutely everything, especially your own decisions. Welcome to the Permission Slip Podcast, where I, empowerment coach, mindset expert, and holistic nutritionist, Carmen Oling, share with you the tools, conversations, and resources you need to write your own permission slip, take massive action, and become obsessed with your own life. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Permission Slip Podcast, friends. I have a fun topic for you today, and that is your upper limit. So your upper limit is something that I deal with often with my clients. I know I have dealt with this with myself and continue to do so as I reach new heights and grow both spiritually, personally, within my relationships and within my business and opportunity to serve. This always, always comes up. So you can never get rid of it. But you can become more self-aware and more self-resourced around it. So in this episode, I am going to share with you how to recognize if you are upper limiting yourself. Now, this term upper limit, it really comes from the work of Gay Hendricks and his book, The Big Leap. So I want to read to you at the beginning, he shares what he uncovered as his problem with his upper limit. And he says, I have a limited tolerance for feeling good. When I hit my upper limit, I manufacture thoughts that make me feel bad. The problem is bigger than just my internal feelings, though. I seem to have a limited tolerance for life going well in general. When I hit my upper limit, I do something that stops my positive forward trajectory. Hmm. How many of you can relate to that? And if you've never thought of this idea before or never thought like, why would I want to make myself not feel good if I'm feeling good? This is 110% so common. So I sat here and I was thinking, um, I was just on a podcast on one of my friend's podcasts and she had asked me the question, how do you know if you have an upper limit problem? And so my initial thought was, well, when you get in a season of serious overwhelm, then you know you have an upper limit problem. You have an upper limit problem because you're trying to be everything for everyone else and you're not clear on what you want and you think your to-do list is overwhelming you, but it really comes down to the fact that you're not clear. And that is true, but I thought of four other answers that I wanted to share with you as well that I've seen in my own life and that my clients have experienced. Now, I want to go back to Gay Hendricks, the author of that book I told you about for a moment. His mantra, like it lights me up. I remember when I first read that book, I wrote this everywhere because I was like, this feels so good. And his mantra is, I expand in love and creativity as I inspire others to do the same. Don't you love that? I freaking love that. So let me dive into these four. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about what comes up in your life. And then I want you to take this episode and I want you to text it to a friend and ask what's coming up in their life. And I want you to post on your Instagram stories and ask your peeps to also listen and see what's coming up in their life because I promise you, we are gonna see themes because this happens at every next level of success that you're getting to. So number one is the exact one that Gay was talking about in that quote that I read from the book is not allowing happiness. But it's like, okay, so how do we know if we're not allowing happiness in our life? 
So in my life, I sat down and I was like, when, when do I do this? Because I'm always talking about, I want, I want like this, this vision for what I have of focusing on feeling good each day and designing a life and living it and like being an awe of your own life. I want each of you to take that on and then be the one to show the world how great life is. I mean, I talk about that all the time. But if I'm not allowing happiness, like what's coming up for me? The number one thing is going to be worry. So when you find yourself worrying, I always like to remind myself when I find myself worrying that there's something, something so abundant, so great that's trying to break through, but I'm not allowing it. Hence, like upper limiting myself. I'm not allowing it to come through. So the more that I can be self-aware without judgment, because worry is going to come up. It is natural. It is that part of ourselves that, excuse me, whoa, that we've had for so long that's trying to keep us safe. But we don't need that part anymore. Name that part. Give her a name. Tell her Betty, Susie, Veronica, whatever. We don't need you. I don't need you right now because I want to allow happiness and worry is just a way to block the blessings that are coming. The other thing that I found is feeling like what I'm doing is not good enough and wanting more. Not celebrating successes Again, not allowing happiness. What would it be like if you achieved a goal and you celebrated it for like a week before you jumped into the next one? Oh, shocking, right? And then the last thing on not allowing happiness is deflecting, not accepting compliments or help. How often are you deflecting? I want you to think about that this week. And as someone pays you a compliment, no matter how big or how small or where it's coming from, I want you to take a moment and really think about what they said. Make sure to thank them instead of deflecting it. So the number one way you can see if you are having an upper limit problem is that you're not allowing happiness. The second thing, and I know you're going to push back on this, but I have lived this multiple times in my life. So I can tell you that this is true for me. And it is actually true for many of my clients as well, once we actually dive into it, is being sick. I truly believe and know that for myself, I actually can manifest being sick. I know, it sounds strange. Let me share with you. This is like being sick and not feeling well is our body's signal. It's like this sign from God, from universe, from source, that we need to change something in order to get back in alignment with that high vibe energy, with our highest self, with our calling on our life, that we need to take action. And there have been other signs and signals that we have been ignoring, probably because we've been doing too much. Again, going back to that overwhelm and trying to do everything for everyone else. And if we are ignoring that sign, then we are going to get a sign, a physical sign, that something's out of alignment. And it's a signal from source that you're supposed to contract, so step back, rest, change, or expand. Maybe push forward, push into that fear and to really grow. And are you listening? So I'll give you a couple examples so you can actually understand what I'm talking about. This morning I got home from a week of travel and believe me, I loved, absolutely loved my trip. But just being gone, and um, if you're like an East Coast to West Coast flyer, you know, like it takes kind of all day and it's and it's long and it's draining and it usually consists of getting up early, just depending, right? Um, and while I do things to really thrive and nourish myself while I'm traveling, I make sure that I double down on that, uh, double down on the water and eating the good food and still doing my practices of meditation and prayer and journaling and all of the things and getting in as much movement as I can. Um, this morning I woke up and at first I was a little lightheaded and I was like, oh, it's just, I got up too fast. Right. Right. Because again, we're not listening. We're not paying attention or I wasn't anyways. And then I was like, oh, I have this little bit of a headache. 
it's like a dull headache in the back of my head. And so what did I do? I actually laid in bed and I was like, maybe I just need to lay here in bed for a little while longer. See my uh, uh, ego self trying to figure it out for me, right? So as I'm laying in bed, guess what freaking happens? Then the worry comes. So instead of getting up, going, doing my rituals of coconut oil, my whole body, loving my body, brushing and flossing my teeth, getting my lemon water with chlorophyll, drinking that, and then having my coffee and sitting with Joel to do reading and prayer and devotional and meditation and all of that, I laid in bed. And I laid in bed, and so the worry started. So there was that. And I worked really hard to reframe my thoughts. I asked for that to be taken with me, taken from me, for my thoughts to be realigned with source and, you know, still, still working through it and get up. And so I do start my morning rituals and I'm just noticing that I got lightheaded again and I still had this headache. Now, as far as the day goes today, it's Tuesday. Yesterday, um, I was only able to use my computer about half of the day because the Wi-Fi didn't work on the plane for part of the time. Again, could be a sign, right? Um, And I just, I felt this overwhelming sense. Stay the course, go deeper, give yourself grace and move with ease today. And I could have not listened to that. I could have continued with the things that I energetically had planned for the day. And they were all like creative, creative things, creative things that I wanted to do and how much I was going to get done. But instead, like, okay, ease and grace. What what feels good to me right now? And that was really like taking a slow morning, taking extra time to journal, extra time to read, to meditate. When I went to the gym, instead of doing like this super hard leg workout, I did um, a, a good chest and back workout. Instead of going really intense on any cardio because, you know, my logical brain told me, well, you didn't really work out yesterday. I just, I took it steady, took it easy, gave myself some ease and grace, knowing that not every workout has to be super intense to be effective. There's a little nugget for you, by the way, it doesn't, and you don't have to be sore for it to be effective either. So I'm giving myself so much ease and grace, and I just feel my body like coming back into alignment. I got the most divine like downloads during my workout. And I just feel so much better. But on the flip side of that, so what could I have done? I could have pushed and pushed and pushed, done the hard workout, told myself just to push through it, not listen to feeling lightheaded, not listen to having that little dull headache, which now that I'm talking about is actually gone. And I did nothing. Like I didn't take any like Tylenol or ibuprofen or anything, just allowing myself space and ease and grace. Um, because again, it's a signal to contract or expand. And I needed to contract a little bit. I needed to come back home to myself. I really needed to go inside. But on the flip side of that, I could have pushed. It would have probably made the headache worse, probably made other physical symptoms. And I would be super drained tonight when my deepest pri- one of my deepest priorities in my life, Joel, comes home from work. And I wouldn't be too burned out to spend quality time with him. And that's one of my deepest priorities because I'm super clear on that. And so being able to recognize the signs that come through allowed me to not feel sick, allowed me to work through that with ease and grace instead of pushing through because I could have pushed through feeling bad all day long. But who the fuck wants that, right? So number two is being sick. And once you're sick, you can like really go down that rabbit hole and your thoughts can really make you even sicker. Oh my gosh, I did it all last year. I keep saying I'm going to do a podcast on that. Maybe my next podcast is going to be on my thought and my hormones and all of that last year, that health crisis that I would call it and that I went through. That was a rough go, you guys, rough go. If you want to hear about that, send me a DM, let me know. Um, Okay, number three, we have two more to go through real quick. Number three is feeling paralyzed by your to-do list often. So how do you know if you're ready for that next level, but you're holding yourself back? 
if your to-do list is off the chain, if you have this big calling, this big vision on your heart and you have put it out there, but each and every day your to-do list is so long that it's almost so overwhelming that you feel paralyzed, you are the one holding yourself back. You're upper limiting yourself. Because what's happening here is that you're not gaining clarity on two things. So you have your big vision, but you need to gain clarity on what the deepest priorities are today that you need to do, the steps that you need to take on this path to be able to get to the big vision. Because it's not like you just dream it up and you get there tomorrow. You need to have your deepest priorities today. And deepest priorities change with the season. And I don't just mean fall, winter, summer, spring. I mean seasons of your life. When you have different relationships, when you want different things, when you're in a different environment, lots of different things happening. So one, you need to get clear on what your deepest priorities. Clarity, clarity, clarity is huge. And if you want some help with that clarity, by the way, I am doing a free private podcast series in a couple of weeks. So it starts October 17th. And this is by invitation only. So since you're a podcast listener, I'm inviting you. If you're on my newsletter, I'm inviting you. So I'm inviting you where these week, these two weeks in October, you are going to get in your inbox podcasts that only you are going to get listen to be able to listen to. And it's all about living and leading with clarity, confidence, and freedom so you can make the impact that you want to make in your life. And it is going to be so many juicy nuggets and takeaways and things to implement right away. You are going to love it. So if you want to join that free private podcast series, text me the word clarity to 503-386-2981. That will be in the show notes, 503-386-2981. Clarity, text me that. You'll get the, you'll get the invite. It's a few weeks away yet still, but you're going to want to join. Um, so going back. The second thing that is causing you to be paralyzed is that you have not discovered your unique superpower. So each one of us has something so unique inside of us, but often we push that down and we look around us at what others are doing and we start modeling what they're doing, which we might be good at, but it's always, always going to limit us from being great because you need to discover what is that unique thing. You don't have to be everything to everyone all the time. You don't, and you don't have to know everything. I used to try to know everything. It was fucking exhausting. Now I just know more people that know everything. And so if I don't know it, then I'm going to reach out and find someone that does know it. And like make friends with them or whatever, or refer, be able to refer to people, right? You don't have to know everything. No one expects you to know everything. So number one, not allowing happiness. Number two is being sick and not listening to your body. Number three is feeling so paralyzed by your overwhelming to-do list every day that you just like don't even really take action on your deepest priorities because you're not clear on what they are and you're not clear on what your unique superpower is. So if you want to find your unique superpower, I want you to do that too. I created a quiz just for that. So you can go to carmenolin.com forward slash superpower and you can answer a simple seven questions. It only takes a few minutes and I'm going to send you a detail on your superpower how to enhance it, and what to look at, out for too that could be a downfall based on your superpower. So carmenolian.com forward slash superpower. And I'm sure your friends want that quiz too. So be sure to share it with them. Now, the last number four is how to know if you're upper limiting yourself is you question fucking everything. You just question everything. You don't trust yourself. And just like I said about being overwhelmed and trying to know everything and doing everything for everyone, it's fucking exhausting. What would it be like if you trusted yourself? 
I know we talked about this on the podcast. So did you do this experiment? I'll explain it to you in case may- maybe you missed that episode. I want you to start experimenting with trusting your first decision. So when you get dressed in the morning, trust your first des- decision on if you're going to wear the cute underwear or the granny panties. Go for whatever you think of first. Trust your first decision on what it is or what you're going to eat. Trust your first decision on small to how you're going to fix your hair, what eyeshadow color you're going to put on, uh, what phone call you're going to make. Trust your first decision and see how that feels. See how that's different than questioning absolutely everything and just be a judge again. Like, you, whoa, take that back. Do not be a judge. Just be a witness of how often you question yourself. Because what if you could take a little bit of that energy back and start trusting yourself? That's where, because we already talked about freedom through happiness. We already talked about freedom through not being sick and listening to our body and resting when we need to. We already talked about not being paralyzed by your to-do list and having clarity. And if you didn't question yourself and you actually had deep self-trust, You would have so much confidence in yourself that you would get closer to that big dream, that big vision so much faster because you wouldn't be questioning everything. So those are the ways that you can look for if you're upper limiting yourself. And so this is for you if you're really looking to get to that next level, that next dream, that big goal, but you're just not making substantial progress then I want you to check into these. If you're not allowing happiness, if you find that you're not feeling well often, if you're paralyzed by your to-do list every day, and if you're questioning everything, especially your decisions, then you have an upper limit problem. Okay, I am so grateful for you and I can't wait for you to take that superpower quiz. So make sure to hop over to carmenolane.com forward slash superpower. And if you want to join that private podcast experience, I want to see you there because guess what? If you want like a special coaching session with me on the podcast, I'm going to take applications for that too. And you want to be there because this will be free. It'll be so fun. So text me the word clarity to 503 386 2981. And again, I'm so grateful for you listening and I will see you, talk to you (laughs) next week. Bye.